Um, but tonight we're going to get into something. Um, we actually finished the Kingdom Families series this past Sunday. I know my wife mentioned something about continuing on tonight. But, and I was going to. I was going to because she had mentioned that. And then uh, as I went to sit down and, and just think about where God wanted to lead us tonight, God took me to another, take, took me to another place. Now, um, starting Sunday, we'll start a new series, and we're still going to be talking about families and things like that, um, but tonight, I really sense inside me that we got to get back to faith for a little bit. We got to shift back into faith for just a little bit. We're a faith church, all right? I, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but we are a faith church, and yes, talking about families and all that's wonderful and it's great. I like it. The thing is, my, my thing is... Pre- Teaching faith, all right? Walking by faith, all right? And one of the things about walking by faith is that sometimes we can't see what's ahead unless you tap into the fourth dimension. Unless you tap into the third heaven, which you can't you can do, all right? Um, I remember there was a time I was going through something tough back in 2006, 2007. And I was praising and worshiping. I was, I was working at fiberglass systems at that time. And, you know, uh, in that plant, um, there's a lot of machinery. And, you know, we're running machines and things and uh, very loud in there. So, you know, other people couldn't hear me praying in the spirit. And I was. I was praying in the spirit. And, uh, and I was also listening to worship music slash praise music at the same time. And I just was praising them. And worshiping him. And at that time, I was, like, like, I, like I said earlier, I was going through something tough in life. And I almost kind of didn't. The only thing I knew to do was to come to, to come to him. Okay? And that's what all of us in this room should do. Um, I know the first thing we want to do is go talk to somebody, which you should go talk to somebody. But before you go talk to a human person, I would suggest that you start, if if you don't already, start, first of all, go to him. He is your father. Amen? Amen. Okay, he is your God. And he is your savior. He's your redeemer. Okay? And I remember I was there. Sister Chrissy, I was just getting, praying the spirit. And I, I was doing this, I would say, about for 30 to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. And next thing you know, I, I, man, it just came on me, man. I, I'm going to say this, and I know it's not going to sound right saying it in church, but I'm going to say it anyways because this, this, this is how I felt. It felt like I had just smoked a blunt. Some of y'all are like, what? Did you just say that in church? No, it felt like I just got high. And, I mean, it hit me big. I felt like, whoa. Man, it felt like it, except that I didn't smell the smoke, you know, because things are burning when you do that. And so I was like, what's this? And I just got happy. I got happy. All of a sudden, I got happy. I was like, (laughs) you know, like, whoa, man. What's this? This lasted for three days. Three days. Days continually. I don't even remember sleeping. All I remember is that I was in that zone, Brother Daniel, and I went to lay down, and I guess I closed my eyes, went to sleep, and when I woke up, I was still in that same state for three days. I wasn't even tired. I was just like, (laughs) like, it felt like this smile was, I was cheesing. Y'all guys know what it means to be cheesing? I was just smiling, like, constantly, like, (laughs) but you know what happened? I, have, I, I, I tapped into another dimension uh, that carried me through that. And here's what I believe happened, Sister Crystal. I believe that in those three days, God healed and binded up my broken heart. I never once, though, gave in to the world. I never once gave in. I had opportunities. I had my friends knocking on my door. Hey, bro, I heard you're, you know. I'm like, uh, I ain't doing that. They showed up with all sorts of novelties. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And I said, no, nah, man, I, I ain't going that direction. I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. You know what I'd find myself doing? 
getting on my face for hours at a time, seeking God's peace, seeking God's comfort, seeking God's face, seeking God's hand, seeking God's favor, seeking God's strength, seeking God's power. And listen, listen, the reason I'm sharing this with you tonight, because we've got to get to that point. we got to stop worrying about all these little things that the world's trying to throw at you and trying to distract you from the real thing. Is that okay for tonight? Can I be just a little, I'm, I'm going to pour this on you. There was another time I, was, I went to a conference in Dallas. And it was in a, a hotel room. They had just opened up a church. They were just launching it. And so we went to support the ministry. We were there. And I remember it was Dr. Ed Dufresne who was speaking. He was an older gentleman, but he's well known in the faith community. And so we were sitting and listening to him. He starts to preach. Now, back then, this is when I first started, you know, in the word and everything. And I was used to fiery preachers, man. I was used to the yelling and the <laughs> and all this other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I was, I, that's what kind of messages I like to listen to. But when I sat in that service, the gentleman got up, he started preaching, and it was slow. And he was talking like this, and the Bible says, and I thought to myself, am I really going to have to sit through all this? For like, probably, he's probably going to preach for about an hour and a half the way he's going. Anyways. I didn't show nothing on my face because I had always learned you pretend like you're listening to somebody. So that they, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to ask you guys to do tonight. Just pretend like you're listening to me. I would tell that to my youth. Every t- when I was a youth pastor, every service, I'd say, hey, just pretend like you're listening to me. We'll be all right. And so they'd all be sitting there, and I'm like, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, uh, so I was there, and I was, I was listening, at least pretending at first. And then I started listening. And as, as, as the message kept going, <clears throat> I started feeling this weird little jelly feeling in my body. Weird, like, that's the only way I could describe it. It was like this, like, I felt like my, my like, jelly, you know, like, kind of limber. I started feeling in my body, and I was like, the world? And then about that time, I looked down my body. I'm like, oh, man, I feel, I feel weird, man. And then I looked over, and there was three rows ahead. I was in the third row, and there was three rows in the first row, hardly anybody was sitting in the second row. It was pretty full. I, I looked to the second row as he was speaking, and I looked over there, and I seen the people started to lean. Like, like all of them, they started kind of leaning like this. And I was like, what in the world's going on, man? And then I seen the person in front of me, he started leaning. And the next thing you know, he started laughing. And I was like, man, that's disrespectful. What's he doing laughing? I want to watch y'all guys laughing in my service, right? I'll be like, hey, get out. Reuben, get him. <laughs> no, no, no. But watch this. He starts laughing. And he starts leaning. And then the next person starts laughing. He starts leaning. And then I'm feeling this jello we feeling, so I'm kind of tripping out. Like, what in the world is happening here? And I kept listening. I kept listening. Next thing you know, whew, I felt it come on me. I was like, oh, literally, guys, this is crazy. I felt like I was drunk. I felt like I was drunk. It wasn't hiccuping or nothing. <laughs> I was drunk in the sp- Well, when I walked out, I walked out of there, and I felt like I was super light, even though I was a little heavy, right? I, mean, I was super light, and I was just like walking out. I felt like I was just, just light. But... Still feeling this feeling. And I get out into my vehicle and I sat there and I was like, Lord, what in the world was that about? He said, son, that's what it is to get drunk in the spirit. You know what that told me? I don't have to get drunk on natural alcohol. Just as much as whatever it is that this world has to offer, God can offer you a whole lot better without a hangover. And watching the process, he'll heal you. He'll touch your life. He'll get you to a point where, like, whoa, you get to know God. See, nobody can take that away from me. I don't care what you say. Well, there's no such thing as getting drunk in the spirit. I did it. Well, there's no such thing as getting high in the spirit. That's just symbolisms. No, it isn't. I got high in the spirit. The Bible even tells you to get drunk in the spirit. (laughs) 
See, see, those are experiences. This ain't just Bible knowledge. This isn't just something I read in the Bible and I believe it. And so now, you know, no, no, this is an experience that I had. This is me experiencing God for myself and him showing up in that manner. So here's what I'm trying to get to you guys. Listen, we got to get back to that point. We got to get back to the point where you get high in the spirit and you get drunk in the spirit, where you begin to start sensing God's presence. And it's not something that you're hoping I get to do. You actually experience that. And I've heard God speak to me audibly. I know some people say, man, you probably shouldn't be saying that. But I have heard God speak to me audibly. I have also had him nudge in my my hair, my nose, my, my spirit, man, I have. But I hear him speak to me. Just today, when I was in my face in my office, I went from standing up. No, I went from sitting down. I went from standing up, sitting down on my face, and then flat out on my stomach just laid out. And God was speaking to me. And he reminded me about what we, I shared with you guys about three Wednesdays ago. And I said, well, God said this through me. He says, I am giving you a new mantle. I am giving you a new mantle. The word mantle is describing a fresh anointing and a fresh empowerment that's going to come on you so that you can accomplish what the Lord has set out for you to do. Like, like listen, if you receive this new mantle into your life, you're going you're gonna to end up in the morning. Differently. You're going to pray differently. You're going to seek differently. You're going to talk differently. You're going to feel differently. When you talk to people, wisdom is going to come out of you. That you didn't even, You're going to be like, where in the world did that come from? Is this a little bit too much, guys? Is this too heavy? I'm just trying to get you to a point where you can understand there is such a thing as the supernatural power of God. I know this is going to be laid on thick, but by the end of this service, some of you in here, you, you're probably going to feel drunk and you're going to feel high in the spirit. If you would just listen to what I'm telling you. Notice the kids are asleep and not laid out in the spirit. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but that, too, has happened to me. I was one of those guys that said, man, they're probably pushing them down, you know, <laughs> like. I don't, man, ain't nobody going to push me down. I'm a big, back then, I was, I was a little bit bigger than what I am now. Back then, I was like, man, ain't nobody going to push me down like that. But yet, I believed. Something was doubting, but then I believed. I was like, okay. Till one day, I walked up, and the preacher man was up. There was a guest, guest speaker. He went up there and said, man, does anybody in here want a friend? Man, I felt, the Lord, I felt the Lord just nudge me to go up there. So I went up there, man. And I mean, listen, this guy didn't push me. He didn't even push my head back or nothing. He just went like this, like that. And I mean, I felt, it just came on me, man. Boom! And I was laid out there, I don't know for how long. And then I opened up one eye and I thought, man, what are people going to think about me up there laying down like this? But, but something happened when I was down there. I, I felt as though, man, there was a restructuring happening on the inside of me spiritually. As if God put a coat, like, like, you know, like a, like, you know how you put a coat of paint over something? Like it was a coat of something that got put on the inside of me, like a protective coat. To the point where I knew who my enemies were, and they weren't people. Where if people said something about me, it didn't affect me anymore. Where if you hurt my feelings, it, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. It didn't penetrate that anymore. I don't know about you guys. Maybe I'm just wasting my breath here, but I don't know about you guys. But wouldn't you like to have that? Wouldn't you like to know God on a different level besides just the Bible knowledge? Besides, yeah, you know what God can do through this Bible because the word says, okay, how about this? I know what God can do because he touched me personally. Have you ever called out to God where you're not crying because the situation was bad, but you're crying because you felt him touch you? 
that happened to me, Sister Nancy. I was in the shower. I know there's a little bit too, too much information right there, right? But I was in, don't picture it. Just go, go past it. Go past it. So I was in the shower, right? And I was just calling out to God. Because most of the time in the shower, that's when usually I kind of, anyway. So, uh, so I'm calling out to God. Emily, I felt him hug me. And I immediately started crying. I felt him wrap his arms around me, like literally. I felt that, man. I could feel his love. I could feel his love loving on me. You know, when I first came to Jesus, I had to ask God. I, this was one of my prayers. I said, Lord, teach me to love because I don't know how to do it. God had to teach me, and I still haven't got it down all the way but God had to teach me by not just showing me through the word of God but showing me he physically touched me come on are you with me tonight do you see all these things I, I mean I've seen legs grow out when people get I've seen that I don't want you guys to think I'm spooky and strange and weird but I do want you to understand I know I'm a spiritual being that's created in God's image and in God's likeness. And I believe in the supernatural power of God that he has for you and I, dreamer. He has something supernatural for you that you hadn't even thought of yet. Our human, our human mind alone cannot fathom what God has in store. Isaiah, we read this the last time when he says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. But we can have the thoughts of God if we make a decision to pursue after him. And I don't mean religiously either. I mean a tangible, a real experience and touch of God. Not just something you read about, not just something you may have a devotional about and somebody else experienced it. I'm talking about you, Sister Vicky, you experiencing God for yourself. I mean face to face. I mean in and out. I believe, watch, I'm going to prophesy over you. I believe that some of you are going to, you're going to feel the love of God. And it's going to change everything about how you think. About love. Somebody say, I receive that. Come on, somebody say, I receive that. Those of you that are watching, receive that. I'm, I'm telling you. That's it. Because God's going to take us somewhere. Watch this. Let's go into the word real quick. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. I'm just going to read this, but I'm going to pull a couple of things out in the Amplified. It says this, but understand this. That in the last days will come and set in perilous times of great stress and trouble. And they're going to be hard to deal with and hard to bear. Notice that. The word says that. How many of y'all know that that's real? You've experienced that. Right? Okay, now watch. Watch this. The title of this message is, Believe that all things are possible. I believe. That's what it's called, right? Believe all things are possible. Believe all things are possible. That's it. Good. All right. The actual title of it is Believe the Supernatural Power of God Where All Things Are Possible. That's the actual title of it, but we go ahead and sh shorten it. So watch this. If you have, if, watch, if you have experienced these things, that also means we can experience the opposite of them. I had somebody tell me one time, Sister Dusty, you, you, there's no possible way that you can be happy every day. And I'm like, I am. I mean, people try to get me upset. They do. They, they try to get me mad. But I'm like, I got the remote control. You don't. You can't push my buttons. And I'm going to hold on to it because it's stuck on like Velcro right here. So the way to get it from me is to, you know, pull it off me. But you ain't because I ain't going to give it to you. Therefore, nobody can make me mad. Nobody can make me upset. Like, you just can't. I, I choose if I want to be mad or upset or not. But that's what somebody says. There's no way that you can be happy every day. I said, I'm happy every day. 
You know what I mean? I mean, because I choose to be. Come on, somebody. It's a choice. I choose to be happy today. Okay, cool. Then let's go for it. But somebody's going, well, blah, 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 blah. Okay, man, we'll fix it. No problem. I got it. But you ain't going to make me mad. You ain't going to make me upset. You ain't going to offend me. You ain't going to know that. It's just going to be, I'm just going to be happy about it because I chose to be happy. Come on, amen? Okay, so parents' times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Watch this. Here's, what's going, here's the kind of people that are going to try to make things crazy. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by any inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman. They will be relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. They will be treacherous betrayers. Rash and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. For although they hold a form of piety or true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. And their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. And then it says, avoid all such people Turn away from them. In the King James translation, it says they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Now, watch this, guys. It's telling you what kind of people are going to be doing this. Here's the deal. They think that they can't change. Why? Because they're denying and rejecting the power of God. And here in this house tonight, here's what I want to encourage you with. Believe in the supernatural power of God that will cause you to believe that the impossible is possible. Like, come on, God is able to do this in your life. Don't sit there and get stuck that I, there's no way I can get out of this. No, God always makes a way of escape. All right, so let's go to 1 John 5, 4, the Passion Translation. It says this, you see, every child of God. How many children of God we got in this room? Come on, y'all be proud of it. How many children of God do we got in this room? All right. Now watch this. You see, every child of God, watch this, overcomes the world. Ooh, for our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. Whoa. See, see, okay, again, I said something earlier. I said there's, the, this world's trying to offer you things that are trying to distract you from the real thing. See, God has put inside you already the power. He's, he's already put it inside you to overcome the world. Like, you don't have to be sucked into that mess. Right? Now, the reason I'm saying that, I'm not trying to be all, like, like if I'm holy, that I don't do, I'm saying that, you, we have a choice to make that you can choose that am I going to get high on drugs or am I going to get high in the spirit because they're both available for you. <laughs> oh, sorry. You can choose that you're going to get drunk on alcohol or you can get drunk in the spirit because they're both available to you. You can choose to be sick in your body or to be healed by his stripes. Because they're both available. You can choose. Because they're both available. But see, this word done told you that it is your faith in God that's going to allow you to overcome the world. Now, here's the reason why we can do it. John 16, 33. King James Translation, here's Jesus, and he said this, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. So say peace. Not chaos, not disruption, not division. Come on. Not hatred, not racism. No, no, peace, that you can have peace. Some of y'all are like, I got a peace. No, not that kind of peace. Some of y'all are like using that piece instead of the other piece. No, ain't nobody. Okay, I got you. 
But Jesus says, I've spoken these things that in me you might have peace. Watch this. In the world you shall have tribulation, which is trouble, which is chaos, which is stress, which are all these things that we're so infatuated with. He says, but be of good cheer. Be happy. Notice that if I read this today, Jesus says, be of good cheer. Be happy. If I read, if I read this tomorrow, Sister Nancy, it, it, that we're still going to say, be of good cheer. Be happy. If I read this next week, it's still going to say, be of good cheer. Be happy. <laughs> Come on. I have a choice to be of good cheer or bad cheer. You're a bad sportsman. No, I'm a good sportsman. I want to be cheerful. I want to be happy because I'm choosing to be. Why? Why is this? Why? It says, be of good cheer. I, Jesus says, have overcome the world. All right. That's the reason why he's saying that our faith, our faith will overcome the world because we have faith in somebody who has already overcome the world. And when we tap into him, now we can overcome the world too. And when tribulations show up, they're not going to affect you like that, like they used to. Because, see, we have, we have a greater purpose now. And our purpose is to believe in the supernatural power of God. Are y'all with me tonight? See, you don't have a pastor up here, guys, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn. But what I'm saying is... You have a pastor up here who, who doesn't just have Bible knowledge. And the Bible says not to just have mere knowledge, but to experience it. Okay? I can talk to you guys about the supernatural power of God because I've experienced it. I've seen it. I've dealt with it. I've, it's on the inside of me. And I know I, I'm, I'm very nice out here in front of people. And, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I do what I'm supposed to do. But on the inside of me, I'm bold as a lion. Okay, honestly. And I can lash out if I wanted to. I remember one time somebody said, you know, um, they're like, you know, Pastor Bird, you know, like when you talk to people, like you need to like maybe like be a little nice or at least kind of change your voice, your tone of your voice. Because, because uh, but when you talk like that, it tends to, it, something shifts, like something shakes or something. And I was like, what does that mean? He's like. It just seems that there's too much power that comes out of you. I was like, oh, I see. I remember when I first got saved, Brother Hector, I would go talk to people. And listen, it was, it was crazy, Soraya. But it was like, I was would, I would just talking to people. They start crying. I was like, what are they, did I say something wrong? And they would say, no, it's just, I can, I can feel the presence of God. I want to get back to that. You talking to me about bologna and cheese sandwiches, and I start talking to you about God, and all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> and then I have to bust out the. Y'all didn't get it. Okay. No, watch. We all got to get back to that. It's time for us to start being hungry and thirsty for more of God. Because I'm telling you right now, if you've never experienced anything like what I've experienced, then we, you ain't seen anything yet. You ain't experienced that yet. And it's time for us to do that. And you don't have to be all religious. No, no, no. All you got to do is accept the power of God that's available. <laughs> I'm going to release it onto you guys when this service is over in 15 minutes. Ruben's, Ruben, he needs to touch a guy. <laughs> now, <clears throat> in a minute, I want to pray over you guys. And watch, I'm telling you, something's going something's gonna to change. Because we ain't, we ain't just going to be singing a song, we go from glory to glory and not, not receive it. I want to see all of us in this room go from glory to glory. I want you to be that person that when you talk to people, even if you're not talking to them about God, you're talking to people and an anointing just be released. 
and they feel something different coming from you. Come on. Whew, praise God. Okay. I, um, I don't think we need to go into all the rest of this. Did y'all guys get that tonight? I just It's because I want you to see. Okay, let me just bring one, one more up. All right, Ephesians 1, 3 through 4 in the King James. Let me just bring this up and we'll, get, we'll be done for the second time. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at that real quick. Let's just break that down. Is it saying it's, he, he's going to bless us? No, it's saying that he has already blessed us. Now, now why, this, is gonna, this is even going to be a little bit more crazier when he did this. It says here, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him. Watch this. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The reason I want to pull that out to you guys, here's what, listen, remember, we're, we're talking about believing that all things are possible. Okay, watch this. God didn't wait for Brother Daniel Diaz to be born on this earth on June 6th, 1973. I mean, I know you weren't born in 1973, but we're going to give you that date. All right. <laughs> He's like, yes, I was. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> like, God didn't wait for you to be born and then, like, grow up. And then, and then, then God's like, well, let me see how he does. And then I'll, I'll put something inside of him so now he can continue on. <laughs> no, no, no. See, God blessed you, watch this, before you were even in your mother's womb. Before you were even thought of, before she even looked at you and thought how good looking Hector is. You know, before that, hey, she said amen. <laughs> or before your mom, brother Hector, before Sister Dolly even seen you. You came out, you know, like that. Before that even, before you were even in her womb, before you were in the bed. Whoa, let's go further back. Before the foundation of the world. He blessed you. He put everything you needed on the inside of you before you even thought of. But he knew you. You know what that tells me? We all have God-given purpose in this room. And it's time for us to stop scratching our head and say, well, what is it? No, 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 listen. Go seek him. Go follow after him hard. Go hard after God. Go hard after God. Go hard after Jesus. Go hard after the Spirit. Go hard, man. Intentionally. Make a decision. Because I want you to experience the best that you can experience. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience heaven. I didn't. And near to you. You can have a heavenly marriage. You can have heavenly children. You can have heavenly relationships. You can have heavenly finances. Come on, you can have a heavenly church. You can have a heavenly pastor. Watch this. But whose choice is it? <laughs> I was going to say like, I was like, ours, mine. It's your choice. Watch this. You don't have to wait for a healing to show up. There's already a healing available for you. I'm serious. Most people, oh, I'm just waiting for God to heal me. Uh, God already healed you. The Bible says that by his stripes you were healed. See, he's already provided for you. You don't, but see, it's up to us. We got to go seek him. Your financial provision is not coming up ahead. You already have it. He's already provided it for you. You just got to tap into it. Anything, job, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, Education, house, car, whatever, horses, cows. I'm sure you don't want to sit on a cow for, for a little while, but 
He got hurt sitting on the couch. That's why I'm saying that. I mean, whatever the case may be, businesses, clients, people. Today, when I was seeking God in my face in my office, God said, they're coming. Just get ready. They're coming. But you're leaving. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? It's time for us to tell. This church is going to have to be the church that provides the supernatural power of God. Not just sitting in church and it's a pretty message and I like it, all get pretty, and then you leave out there and forget about the whole thing and don't live it out. I want these things to stick inside you so that when you go out there, you, you know what to do. You know, I had today a story Sister Christy was sharing with me about how there was something going on with the car. And then, you know, she, she called me and said, man, they, you know, my, my, the car was knocking and this and that. And, man, I, they, they want to charge me this large amount of money. And, and she goes, I'm just going to buy me a brand new car. And, and I was like, well, okay, that's cool if you want to. Right? And she says, and then she calls me back about maybe 45 minutes later. She says, Pastor Bert. I was like, what's up? She goes, man, I started my car and it didn't even knock. I said, come on. And then she said, because my husband, Jesse, who's right here, she said, Jesse was, she told him, I was praying for that car. And I said, Lord, in Jesus' name, you know that we were at right now, but that car right now has got, and then he, she said that he made a statement. She goes, I remember, because Pastor Burt always teaches us that the impossible is possible. Hey, that's the motto of this church. You come to a church where the motto is the impossible is possible. That means I better live up to that, right? I'm just telling you right now, the impossible is possible. It is. It is. Mark 9.23. Watch this. Mark 9.23. I know I said we're going to close on the last one, but here we go. Mark 9.23. Boom. Watch this. Jesus said this. Jesus said unto this God, if you can believe, watch this, all things are possible to him that believes. Praise God. Come on, somebody. If you would just believe. So an impossible situation shows up in your life, what do you do? You just believe that it's going to turn around. Don't think how. Don't ask that. How is this going to Don't do that. Just say, this will turn around. If your mom shows up and says, mijo, mira, aquí tengo un dolor, you just say, hey, you're healed. And believe it. Because I said at the very beginning, there's a way where you can tap into the fourth dimension or the third heaven. Watch this. And here's what you do. You get into that presence and you can pull out the heavenly substance and manifest it into the natural. Are you with me? But we're always trying to work for it, work for it, work for it. Well, we can't afford it. We can't. No, no, no. Listen, sometimes you just got to step out of that boat. Sometimes you got to step out of that boat and see God hold up the water for you. A bunch of phones going off this morning. One, two, three. <laughs> Tira los teléfonos ya. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> La vacía. Are, are you with me here, guys? Listen, Jesus said that. If you can just believe, all, th all things are possible for him who believes. Just believe that God can. Just believe that God can. Just believe that he can. And let's go. Stop trying to, you know, just too many people are always, always just trying to, let me see. Just but listen, man, every, I just, that's all number word right there. That's the Bible, all that stuff. You don't have to, put, you don't have to take my word for it. Take that word for it. Because that's what I believe. You know, the way I see it, the way I see it, Sister Vicky, is that if he didn't want me to believe that, he should have never put it in the Bible. Right? That's what I told God one day. He should have never put that in the Bible. Because now I can believe for everything that Bible says I can have. Boom, I can have it. Everything. There's even a scripture in Isaiah that says, all the wealth of the Dead Sea will be returned back to you. And if you go down here at the very bottom, it says the wealth of the, that the wealth of the, the Dead Sea is accumulated to 
the wealth of a, the United States. I'm like, I receive that, God. Thank you, Jesus. Because what I'm going to do with it, we're going to bless a lot of families. And you don't think that when you start blessing families, I shouldn't probably be saying this as a pastor, but you don't think that when you start blessing families, they're going to start showing up to the church? That's not the reason behind it. But when you help people out, they'll tend to want to listen to you. I'm not the brightest person out there. I'm not the most, but one thing I do know is that God can do the impossible. He can turn a drug dealer like me into a, he can turn a dope dealer like me into a hope dealer. He can turn a hard-headed Mexican like me into a preacher and minister of the gospel, which is a privilege. You know, I didn't downgrade when I came to become full-time ministry. I didn't downgrade. And that's what people thought when I left, uh, when I left the uh, fiberglass systems. They're like, bro, what, how are you going to live life? You're not. They didn't understand that I was upgrading, not downgrading. I work for the greatest boss. I work for the fastest growing industry that this world can offer. The kingdom of God, bro. That's who I work for. And it is a blessing. I love what I do. But I have to, I have to stay constantly in his face. That's the only hard part about it, really. Just showing up to God. You got to show up to God. Make sure things are okay. And then pray for all of you guys because y'all guys be going through some stuff. But here's what I'm praying. I'm praying that God's going to take you guys out. And he's going to take you guys out in such an incredible way that you're going you're gonna to sense the blessing of God all over the place. Y'all guys receive that this morning? Hey Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. We're fixing. We're, we're done. Did y'all receive that? Come on, lift up your hands to heaven. Let me pray over you. We are going to give an offering tonight. So if you do have an offering, thank you so much. There's envelopes right there in front of you. There's also text to give if you give by that manner. Thank you all so much for your hearts of generosity. But let me pray this over you guys. Father, I just declare that in this room, it is filled with your people who are having a new mantle on their life. That they believe in the supernatural power of God that is at work on their behalf allowing them to believe that all things are possible. Father, I just ask right now that you eradicate every trace of doubt, every trace of unbelief, that they will believe the word. They will read this word and believe this word. They will take it in. Father, and I'm just asking right now, there will be turnarounds and breakthroughs and miracles and addictions being broken and sicknesses being broken and, 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 and eyes being opened and ears being opened, Father. I just declare right now that families are restored, that children are restored, Father. I just declare right now, God, that there will be the power of sickness and the power of poverty will be broken off of their lives, that there will be no more lies and pride will be defeated, corruption and deceit will be broken off of their lives, low self-esteem and anxiety, depression and hatred will be taken out of their lives, Father, by the supernatural power of God. And, Lord, I just release upon them, I release the power of God over their families, over their children, over their marriages, over their finances, over the community, over businesses, over homes, over our churches, over our schools, Lord, over our minds, over our hearts, over our nation, over our government, over our bodies, our relationships, our jobs, our careers, our dreams, our ideas, our health health, our mouths, our regions, our territory, and our land, Father. I just declare, God, that there is a supernatural power of God blessing resting upon your people, God. May they not turn back anymore, but may they walk forward walking by faith. And I thank you, God, that the spiritual blessings from heaven that you have already blessed us with are being seen, that they are being experienced, God, even right 
now according to their faith. Lord, I just declare that over your people. Father, and also declare over every giver in this house tonight that whatever it is that they give, Lord, that it will be fruitful. It will multiply, God. And I thank you, Father, that there will never be another shortage in their lives. There will never be another ounce of lack in their lives. That they will walk in full prosperity in their lives. That they are blessed to be a blessing, Lord, as they sow that seed tonight. Let it multiply. We ask these things in the mighty powerful name of Jesus and all the saints in the south said I receive and I believe in Jesus name amen and amen